10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have engine ignition. Plus three. And we have liftoff, liftoff of NASA's QuickScat satellite aboard a Titan II rocket from Vandenberg Air Force Base as we continue to study the winds of the world's oceans. We were only supposed to operate for two years. We've been up there operating for 10 years. I really think the government has got its money's worth. It's a terrific feeling to know that our spacecraft, QuickScat, is still up there flying today. It's been almost its a decade, really, uh, since we launched it. Uh, and it's been providing great science data, and it's providing data to the operational community, which use it for weather forecasting and storm warning also. One of the surprises, ple pleasant surprises that we had was to find that the individuals at NOAA that actually predict the hurricanes actually use this data to help with their predictions. In fact, if they see a pass for QuickScat coming overhead, they will actually wait to make sure they can get that data and get the most accurate information that they can to predict where the hurricanes are going. Before QuickScat uh, was around, we never forecast hurricane-level winds in the northern Atlantic. As the forecasters have become familiar with the QuickScat data, they have now been able to forecast up to 70 storms in a single season. And these are storms with hurricane-level winds that could sink a ship. If, if you look at uh, sailors, uh, they would never go now uh, venture in, in the northern latitudes without looking at the QuickScat data. And in fact, one uh, funny story that we have is that there are wind sailors that are having races across the world. And in the past, uh, they didn't know where they were going to end up. With the help of QuickScat data, they've been able to improve the times and set world records to traverse the world's ocean. Uh, and that's because we have near real-time data that are useful to people everywhere. At age 10, I can say that the instrument continues to function flawlessly as, as well as it did on day one. Um, there's really not been any degradation that's noticeable or detectable in terms of the data products that come from the instrument. And uh, we actually still have backup uh, redundant hardware that we could, could fall back on if there was to be a failure. So I think one of the legacies of QuickScat is clearly going to be um, that this system has survived now for 10 years. Perhaps it'll, it'll survive many more years, we hope. Um, but. but my feeling is that's a testament to the, to the integrity of the design, the systems engineering, the, the mission assurance, the reliability, um, all of the, the industry partners that, that participated in developing and, and implementing this instrument, the spacecraft. Um, they just did a tremendous job, and I think uh, that's clearly one of the great legacies of the QuickScat mission.